Right now you're down there in those comments. I see you. Get out. Get back up here. All right. L look at me. Okay. I know what you're going to type. You're going to be like, oh my God, darkness. You are reviewing a Zelda game. You don't review Zelda games. That's, that's not allowed or whatever. I don't care. I don't know why everyone gets all weird whenever I review like a Nintendo game. Like, like it's like, I'm only allowed to review Sega and Sonic stuff or things that aren't Nintendo, but the minute I touch Nintendo, it's like, <gasps> oh my god, it's so creepy. Oh yeah. Uh... Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U is getting reviewed today, and it was a bit of a difficult review for me to get together. See, you know, you're right, I've never reviewed a Zelda game, and I've never really been into the Zelda series at all. I, I, and out of the ones I've played, I've only really genuinely liked four of them. Just four. Uh, the, the first one on the NES was pretty good for what it was. Um, I liked Majora's Mask. Twilight Princess is my favorite, and I really do like Wind Waker. But every other one I've either thought was just passable, or I really, really hated. 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 But we're not talking about that. Going into Hyrule Warriors, I wasn't really sure what to expect, because this really isn't like a, any other Zelda game out there. It, it's a spin-off for a reason, because it plays nothing like the other Zelda games. There are elements that they preserve, which is good, that, that establishes that this isn't the same series, but even its continuity isn't the same. It's not even in the same timeline, because it's not supposed to be. It's, it's a complete outlier. Kinda like Sonic Boom. Only, you know, not crap. Have I changed? Is, is, is like Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors or that gun one that I forget the name of that's, that ends in Warriors I presume it, it, it's its own it's, it's, it's a battlefield arena game where you run around and you kill a gajillion enemies like that are in your path there are higher level enemies to fight and there and then there are player characters that are much more powerful and things like that but you know it, it's, it's that kind of game and the thing about that is I haven't actually played a Dynasty Warriors game in so fucking long. Like, the last Dynasty Warriors game I played wasn't Dynasty Warriors, it was Samurai Warriors, and that was like a decade ago. Which makes me feel really friggin' old, let me tell you. So it's been a while for me, so I, 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 I remember elements, but there are things in this game that I don't remember at all from Dynasty Warriors. Like, giant bosses. I'm not sure whether that's something Dynasty Warriors added, or if this is an element oh, taken from Zelda. Um, either way, I consider it a, a, a good thing. In addition, I noticed that there are these things in this game called combos, which threw me off at first, because as I remember Dynasty Wars being one of the most button mashy games ever, combos, I, I think they were there, but they weren't really necessary and they weren't really fluid. Here, combos, to begin with, are incredibly useful, secondly, are fucking awesome, and third of all, uh, are much easier to execute. You have a light attack and a heavy attack button, and you can combine those buttons in order to form combos. It's it's like a fighting game. Well, no, that's a bit of a stretch. The combos are relatively simple, and to be honest, most of them boil down to press light once and then follow it with a heavy, or press light twice and follow it with a heavy, or press light three times and follow it with a heavy, and the pattern continues for a bit. I mean, it, 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 the, the combos are essentially it's very similar, and I don't think there's an attack where you actually start with a heavy. It doesn't just end with that one heavy attack. You can't go heavy light, for example. It doesn't work that way. So, saying it's like a fighting game probably isn't accurate, but I'm just glad that there are different attacks to do. And the wealth of characters in the game really, really helps, because each character's combos are extremely unique. No one character in this game is similar, and that, I think, is one of the best parts about it. There's a huge amount of variety in terms of what characters you choose. If you go into a battle with one character, and then go into a battle with a totally different character, your strategy is going to change completely, because the combos do 
almost completely different things. Everyone's attack animations are incredibly unique, and each one fulfills a different purpose. Some characters are better at attacking single strong opponents, while others are others excel at wiping out massive hordes. It really depends. But it does enhance the replayability of the game that you really would like to actually play as every single character that the game has to offer, because again, they're so unique. And I think that's one of the best parts about it. You notice I sort of skipped over graphics and sound and went straight into the gameplay, probably because I really wanted to talk about the game itself. But to touch on the graphics and sound, the graphics kind of bother me a bit, because I just don't feel like this is that much of a step up from Skyward Sword on the Wii. And that bothers me, because this is the Wii U, and you would think that it might look a bit more advanced, but, but it just doesn't look as good as I thought it would. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but, it, like, certain textures look a little bit bland, and some cutscenes you can tell that some things just look a little bit unpolished. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm being nitpicky. I mean, it doesn't look bad, and I'm not gonna really dock any big points off for it, but I feel like it's something to mention that the graphics I feel could have been better. But the music, however, kicks so much ass you would not believe. I mean, Zelda as a series has always had really good music, but here it's all remixes of previous Zelda songs you might be familiar with, and that's fucking awesome because they sound amazing. Getting into the story of the game, there isn't that much here. It's not nearly as deep or, you know, roleplay as you would expect from a Zelda game, probably because this isn't a normal Zelda game. The story's there and it's pretty good, don't get me wrong, it's just not as involved as other Zelda games would lead you to believe. I mean, it centers around Hyrule being attacked and finding out that Link is the chosen one because of course he is, he always is, and there's this evil sorceress named Sia who, uh, uh um, um, I, um, who, um, sorry, excuse me, I, um, I didn't know it was going to be one of those reviews. Listen, sweetheart, I, I, I don't know if you come here often, but, um, I'm a pretty big deal. I, uh, just wanted you to know, and, uh, in case you were ever interested in, you know, around town, I could take you out, have some fun, have a couple drinks, maybe spend the evening together, you know what I mean. Just saying. Stop flirting with the main villainess! Don't you judge me. I'll hit on whatever villainess, evil, sexy, goth chick I, I want. Isn't this the second time you tried to get involved with the main villainess of a video game? Hey, what Shodan and I had was purely forced on me. So you can't bring that up. Don't judge. Get out of here. Just go. Alright, so the story is, is pretty decent for the most part. Each stage is a different set of objectives to do, but it all typically boils down to basically the same thing, which is capturing strongholds. That's the big focus of the game, I would argue. Making sure to always capture strongholds and outposts. Each one is guarded by a group of enemies that you have to beat, and then beat the boss of each stronghold. Once you beat the boss, you capture the point, and your allies will occupy it and allow you to spread throughout the battlefield. This is the main focus of the game, and you really do have to do this. You can't just skip through and go to the main objective each time, which is often just get to a point or do an escort mission or kill a boss. You really need to be capturing strongholds along the way, because if you don't, your armies will be overwhelmed and you'll lose automatically. Much like Dynasty Warriors, you do need to keep tabs on, on whether your army is succeeding or winning, and sometimes you have to put the main objective on hold to go back and, well, help out, to make sure your army isn't getting beaten, to make sure that you actually win the battle. You can't win the war on your own. It's a battlefield, and you gotta help fight the battle. In addition to the combos I already mentioned, there are, of course, super moves. But there are two different kinds that I've noticed in this game, which is different from Dynasty Warriors, once again. See, Dynasty Warriors had just the one super move that you would use, and you'd hold down and murder everyone in your way, from what I remember, of course. Here, though, to begin with, each super move is unique for each character, which is normal, but some characters are just better at certain things than others, once again. Some super moves are really good at destroying everything in front of you, while some are more AoE effective. And certain moves will actually be changed depending on what weapon you're using. Yes, you can also change what weapon you're using. Certain characters have different weapons to choose from, and these will actually change how your combos work and how your moves play out. Again, adding way more variety to the game. Also, each character has a magic spell that they can use, which works for the different bar. My problem with this is that it's really hard to actually get the bar up, and when it does, it goes down very quickly. Granted, the magical spell is extremely strong, typically, so I kind of understand why that's a thing. And once again, it does vary by what weapon you're using and what character you're using. 
there's a variety. Again, I can't stress that enough. That's the one thing I do love about the game, is that there's just way more death than I expected. There are different customizable options to use, different things to put on different characters, different combos to do for different characters. While the game doesn't have all that many maps to work with, it does have a lot of different ways to play on the maps, and that gives it a big boost in terms of replayability. Plus, there are different game modes outside of the main story mode. There's a mode where you go to specifically do challenges to unlock new items for your characters. There's also a free mode where you can choose whatever map you want and play on it with whatever character you want. And there's a proper challenge mode with have, which has specific goals in mind to add to the challenge. There are different things to do, and that's a really, really nice benefit. And oddly, there's a bit, pretty big sense of urgency on these battlefields. You actually get kind of involved when each character starts talking to you and asking for assistance and things like that. You can get really immersed in the game, and that's a nice pl bonus. I remember the stages after you get the Master Sword, and all Sia wants thing to do is come to her room and show her his new weapon. Hey, uh, hey Sia, honey, I got a Master Sword, if you know what I mean. I'm sorry, that was awful, that was awful, I apologize. Actually, no, I don't, I'm not sorry at all. Anyway, you might notice that so far I've been talking about positive aspects of the game. And, yes, there are a lot of positives, but does that mean that I like everything? No, of course not. Some of the characters I hate. I think they're useless. Like, I really, really don't like playing as Sheik as much as I thought I would. I, I just don't find Sheik very useful. And she's not bad, but I just, I don't know, I'm not really, I, I couldn't really adapt to Sheik. I mean, I guess it's just me. You know, maybe there are certain times where certain characters would be better. Maybe, depending on an individual play style, you might, you know, enjoy different characters more. But I just found certain characters to be dull and not as fun. Like, I really didn't like playing as Link as much as I thought I would either. He's pretty boring compared to some characters. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like certain characters weren't as good as others. But again, since there's such a variety in the characters, maybe someone else will come in and play it and have a completely different opinion, thinking Link is awesome and thinking, say, Fee is useless when she's one of my favorite characters. And as much variety as there is in terms of helping the replayability, I gotta say, there isn't that much replayability, which I think is where the game falters a bit. They tried really hard, and there is variety here, but once you've played a certain battle so many times on a specific map, you just get bored with it. It doesn't matter whether you have a different character to play as, or whether or not there's a new weapon to use, eventually you will get tired of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And I think that's one of the game's biggest problems, is that I'm not sure how much replayability there's going to be, even taking into account how much variety there is in terms of customization. I know there are ways to level up your characters and different items to get, and there is depth there, but I just feel like there aren't enough maps to keep you going for any extended amount of time. Even the gameplay itself boils down to doing the same button presses repeatedly. It's not like the combos really change in any drastic way, like in a fighting game, where changing to a different character would radically change your playstyle all that much. Yeah, you'll be better at certain things, but each character does have a specific attack for attacking individuals, and a specific attack for establishing hordes. Every character has at least one of those, so it's not like you're not going to be able to do certain things with different characters and have to play a completely different way every single time. You might change your taxes a little bit, but not enough to keep everyone from getting bored, I think is the problem. The, the amount of playtime with this game isn't going to be nearly as long as a regular Zelda game is what I'm trying to say. Whereas a re regular Zelda game would have you, you know, exploring a vast world and doing side quests, and having a wealth of things to explore and discover, here, it really is just about swinging a sword, repeatedly, over and over and over again, as you might expect from any other Dynasty Warriors game. So you really have to keep that in mind when you go into it. There isn't going to be nearly as much depth here as you would find in, say, Majora's Mask, or Twilight Princess, or any other Zelda game that I happen to enjoy. But hey, it's still a really good game, and that's a big compliment for me, because typically I don't enjoy Zelda games like I said. I've only ever enjoyed four of them, though this will make the fifth. That's five games in the entire series that I happen to like. So, that's a good thing I would say. If you're able to entertain me when I don't like your series, I'd say that's a plus in terms of the game's quality. Oh, and hey, see ya. Uh, my offer still stands, you know. I, uh, totally we can go out sometime. I have no problem with that. What are you talking about now? Okay, this is one of those weird girl cryptic things. Yeah, I don't do that. Okay, you have to be very liberal with me. I really appreciate that. 
Until next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf?